This video will cover some of the LS wiring that I did to my car. So let's get to it. To start out, I need to send power to this C100 plug. These two red wires need 12 volt power since the original harness is gone. On my 92 RS Camaro, I need to power the A4 and G5 wires. I started by depinning the two wires. A plastic fork is removed and the plug pulls out. I'll be running these wires to my custom power board that's inside of the car. I went ahead and crimped some Metripak 280 plugs on both of the two wires. After that plug is installed, the C100 plug is then bolted back onto the firewall. I ran some 10 gauge wires to my power board that's underneath my passenger kick panel. So when my switchboard is turned on, both of the wires get 12 volt power. In a normal swap, these two wires would simply be routed to the battery with some fuses in line. My custom power panel has the standalone PSI harness fuse box alongside the Dakota Digital box. It also has a main power fuse and my Busman relay block with a giant 200 amp relay. The panel opens via a hinge and can be hidden once organized. My ECU is mounted where my speaker and HVAC ducting was. And this is the power feed wire for my fuel pump relay. This is what I did for the battery wiring. I have a fuse box mounted to my firewall with the 12 gauge wire routed underneath the fenders. and that wire is routed to a power bulkhead that's on my firewall. The three wires are battery power, alternator power, and the starter. My battery to chassis grounds are routed from the front to the engine block. I ran two grounds just for safety. The 4 gauge alternator wire is wrapped in heat sleeve because it is very close to the headers. This Dakota Digital 12mm temp sensor is put into the passenger side cylinder head. This is for the Dakota Digital gauges. This oil pressure sender is wired up to the Dakota digital gauges, since the ECU doesn't see oil pressure. The oil pressure sensor wires connect to this Dakota digital box. The PSI LS harness has a few wires attached to it. Wires like speed sensors, temperature, oil pressure, parking brake light. What you use really depends on what your car needs. So this little wire is critical. 
it needs 12 volt power when the engine is cranking and in the run position. Now the PSI fuel pump relay needs to be fed power via this 10 gauge wire. The relay output terminal goes to the fuel pump, so I need to route the fuel pump feed wire as well. I'll be running a 10 gauge wire through the console and out the back, using one of my prototype bulkhead fittings. This bulkhead allows you to use a sealed plug to easily unplug the fuel pump for maintenance or whatever. The 3D printed bulkhead mount is screwed in from behind, then the plug is screwed in from underneath the car. The PSI kit comes with a terminal that secures itself to the fuel pump relay. The 12 gauge feed wire and two fuel level sending wires are shown for my aeromotive gas tank. I routed the fuel pump wires inside the console. The fuel level sending wires are connected directly to the Dakota digital box. And then the fuel pump feed wire is plugged into the relay. So I need a fuel pump ground, and the chassis is a perfect spot to do it. I drilled and countersunk a hole in my trap door. Some paint needs to be removed underneath to make a good ground connection. And look how short this little ground wire is. Some stainless steel bolts secures the ground to the chassis. The other three wires are fuel pump 12 volt power, the fuel level sending positive, and the fuel level sending negative. The nuts are tightened down and the pump is now wired up. My custom bulkhead with a custom plug is now installed. My Fluke 87 shows good continuity, so we're all good here. A little while after my trapdoor video, I added some gasket material to the top piece and some sound dampening. So the reverse light is next. It's located in the old automatic shifter plug as a tiny green wire. I crimped a terminal to the green wire Overall, the reverse wiring is very easy. You just need to provide 12 volt to the green wire and the reverse lights will turn on. I used this old hole where the 700R4 shift linkage used to be. The T56 Magnum reverse plug is a two pin weather pack. You can buy these plugs as pigtails for not that much money. One of the two wires connects to the green wire and the other one to a 12 volt source. Put the T56 in reverse and the backup lights work. Next up is a parking brake indicator for the Dakota digital gauges. It's very simple. The stock parking brake lever has a single blade terminal attached to it. 
make a wire with a female one quarter inch blade terminal and route it to the Dakota digital box. So when the parking brake gets pulled, it also connects to a ground source. That ground source then triggers the light on the gauges. The OBD2 port wires were extended and I mounted it about where the old OBD1 port used to be. So this way I won't accidentally kick the OBD2 Bluetooth receiver with my feet. This is a sneak peek of my custom switch panel. I didn't label anything on purpose for security reasons. This car will be incredibly difficult to steal because there are a lot of switches to start this thing. And that's it for now. My car is super close to running and hopefully I'll have a video of a running car very soon. If you made it this far, consider supporting my content via Patreon and always remember to follow me on Instagram.